Oh, in your days with Gillen, here it comes. In your days with Gillen, you used to do these almost biannual, massive, 45-date British tour. British tour. We did, we did never less than 200 shows a year. Right. With the Gillen Man, yeah. Which was, which was a remarkable achievement. The fans loved it. Now, mm. here we are, three years into the Reform Deep Purple. You've just done these five dates in Britain. That's right. That plus the Nebworth makes right. six. Yeah. Now, of course, everybody wants to know why. I mean, I think the general idea in, in a lot of Deep Purple fans' minds is that you would personally love to do it, but somebody else in the band wouldn't. Right. Well, I think you, first of all, have to accept that um, whether you like it or not, and I don't, but the, the band is kind of based in America these days, even though we're all English. Uh, it's an American management company and uh, American agency. And uh, it's... To all the people who seem to deal with the politics and the planning and the economics and everything else of the whole thing, they can't understand how you can play more than four or five shows in Britain because the halls are just not right. And I say, well, you know, we're traveling with six or seven artics. Why don't you just, like, leave five of them somewhere else, you know, and leave all the rest of the crew somewhere else and just take the backline guys and a couple of drivers and well, why don't we well, do this these This is shows? what everybody's really been well, asking. I'd love to do that, and uh, I think that as long as we keep knocking away and pummeling away at the management and the rest of the guys in the band, then I think they'll do it. I think individually they all sort of can see this, the, that side of it, but um, to put it into their perspective, which I have to do, I don't really want to speak for them because I'm, I'm constantly noodling them away to do more shows, but I, I, I think the only perspective I can see from their point of view is that it has to be put into context with the rest of the world and you're spending a year on the road um, they, we didn't even do any shows in uh, quite a few of the European, other European countries we didn't do any shows at all uh, for whatever reason I don't know, probably the same reasons um, you do the United States it's, it's easy you go every, every little town has got, got a 10,000 seater yeah. and you go there and you just truck it and it's a doddle, and to do a year's tour is, um, I suppose people like to make it as easy as possible. Sure. Okay. But I, I don't see any arguments. The, the, the arguments I won't tolerate are the financial arguments, because everyone, everyone says, well, you can't make a profit in Britain. Well, I, we've all known that for, for 20 years or more, you know. There's no way you can make a profit at most things you do in England. But uh, <laughs> it's, that's not really the point. The point is that I think to keep any, any kind of vitality in what we're doing, we've got to avoid drifting into that um, dressing room, airport, dressing room, airport, hotel room right. kind of syndrome. Um, because then uh, things tend to lose their meaning. I, I think you've got to come face to face with reality now and again. And if you're going to do it, then it's best to do it in a situation where you un understand the culture, the nature of the people who are criticizing you, and to face up to them. And I, I, I think it's great. You, you, I mean, all through your career, you, you've spent so much time on the road, and when you were outside of Deep Purple with your own band, mm. and you were always on the road, mm. albums coming out twice a year, and mm. so forth. Do you think there will come a time when you will consciously want to stop? I mean, it's been a long time, you know. Well, I don't well, know. Well, I don't 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 know. Well, and uh, I think that the idea that everyone's throwing around is that once you reach a certain age, you've got to stop. I think if I felt that it was becoming embarrassing, or um, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people throw around indiscriminate critique just because um, it's fashionable to do so. Mm. Um, and in some cases, some cases justified. And I think it could be justified in our case if we um, if we didn't bother and if we were um, if there wasn't any venom or any anger or reaction to what's going on in the world within our setup, then I think we will be justified. But well, so long as I can still feel anger and joy and passionately about what we're doing, then uh, I don't see any reason why not. I heard um, a couple of the guys from UB40 talking on the one TV program I saw the other day. And uh, I thought, well, how would it be if somebody, somebody asked me that question, which you're doing now, and you've got the answer, um, well, we are honest and sincere about what we're doing. We believe in it 
and I don't see any reason why I should ever stop. Sure. That's exactly what the guy said. Is that what you would say? Uh, yeah, and I thought, yeah, but I mean, if I say that, people are going to laugh at it, you know, because they think, well, you know. <laughs> no, I believe you. You've been saying it yeah. too long for me not to believe you. Yeah. I believe you. If I felt that I couldn't, uh, if, if the power was going, if I felt physically, I think physically would be the first thing. A lot of people lose their voices. Uh, my voice is in good shape now. I finally had my tonsils out, and I've gone through this whole tour without a single problem. Um, and I went through the whole of my, the album recording without any problems at all. I'm able to reach uh, notes that I haven't been able to reach for a long time. And I feel, yeah, I feel in good shape. Now, in the new Deep Purple video to Call of the Wild, which I think is a great video, am I right in saying that you don't actually appear in it? Well, that, yes. I, let me tell you that this is, um, uh, this is an idea promoted by uh, those people who develop and design videos. They thought, we certainly hold very strong views on videos. Um, we've done another video called Bad Attitude, which is just a basic black and white and half color thing. I mean, it's, it's mostly black and white, but um, I, I, like a lot of other people, I think, get fed up with seeing people trying to act out lyrics and, and um, very poorly present in, in a visual situation. Um, a, a sort of in-depth um, view of some very trite and banal lyrics. Um, not that our lyrics are trite or banal, of course, but uh, it, it's very difficult for musicians to encapsulate um, the, 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 a sort of mini epic, which I think everyone tries to do you know, with their songs. So we tend to listen to them. We know that there's a value for videos and it's a, it's a thing which is being considered these days, but I think we always wanted to make sure that we were, at least if we weren't presented right, we weren't presented like, horrendously. So we tend to backpedal an awful lot when it comes to being pushed by management and record company on doing a video. Uh, what, what, what do you do when you're not doing music? Well, um, that doesn't leave much of the year, by the way, but um, uh, well, I listen to the radio. I mean, I, I listen to the radio. I, I don't watch TV at all, really. Um, I, I, I'm very keen on uh, carpentry. I've got a workshop out there. I'm renovating this house at the moment. And anything else that needs doing, brickwork or whatever. Are you actually doing a lot of work on this house at the moment, then? Well, everything so you I've see, personally. I've built myself, yeah. Really? Yeah. So it's, I must say, it's, it's a yeah. beautiful, beautiful house. How, yeah. how, how long have you lived here? Three years, so far, yeah. And there's another 20 years before I finish uh, doing what I want to do. But all the bits of furniture and everything else, I like making myself, you know. Right. Um, and I think uh, the, the other, I mean, I like playing football. Uh, but I don't get much chance of that when I'm at home. And I'm very keen on scuba diving. I go, if, I, if we're just starting, for example, an American tour, because as you know, we spend quite a bit of time over there, uh, and you get breaks between tours and whatever. So I've taken that very seriously, and I've now passed all my exams. I'm now an advanced open water diver, and I'm now taking my master scuba dive certificate, which is going to take five years. It's five speciality courses, one year for each, which is the amount of time I can spare for it. We have to do cave diving, wreck diving, underwater photography, it's a pretty search and rescue. That, though, don't you, really? else. Well, it's great because I've got a friend who's got a dive operation out there, and I go and actually work on the boat as a dive master, and then up at six, humping tanks onto the boat and everything else. It's uh, uh, it's great fun. Yeah. It's, it sounds like a far more mature attitude than perhaps you had. Yeah, well, it would be, wouldn't it? I mean, well, it I mean, is is this really what what keeps the group together now? Being able to say to each other, look, you know, I, I do need a certain amount of time to do my own thing. Yeah, no one actually says that, but I think there's a kind of understanding that that's what happens now. And I, if, if we see um, um, an imbalance setting in, uh, if we see somebody... Everyone gets problems, you know, personal problems from outside the band can, can like, make the whole thing off balance. They can make it go eccentric, you know. So uh, that's the time when everyone says, well, d well, we should leave him alone for a week or two, you know, because he's had a row with the missus or something like that. So. Uh, you know, I suppose an air of tolerance, but at the same time we're just as hungry, I think, as we ever were. But I think, yeah, I think maturity has its advantages. Good words. Ian, Ian Gillen, let me wish you lots and lots of luck with the rest of your world tour. Thank you very much for letting us barge in here today. Oh, it's been great. Ian Cheers, Gillen. Mate. Thank you.